All right, we're going to start the uh, facilities committee meeting for August 26, 2019. Uh, Aaron Durso, chairman, is present. Dr. Cooper is present. Mrs. Kathleen Haynes is present. Casey Blankenbiller is present. Dave Rathgab is present. We also have representatives from various uh, groups here. Uh, we have Halter Landscaping. We have Interstate. We have Amity Township. We're going to start off with uh, Amity Township. We'll get Mr. Bingaman in and out. Hopefully, we vote on what he wants. Otherwise, maybe he won't leave. But uh, have a seat. Thank you, Troy. <laughs> you guys all know Troy, right? Yes. Okay. So we're uh, actually just looking for some discussion and/or. Um, movement on the license agreement for Amity Community Park, which we had forwarded to you guys, I don't know, a few months ago, I think. It's been a while ago. Yeah, um, we, we took the summer off and we ignored you. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's So, I mean, in essence, what we're proposing is to include all of the facilities at the park, which, for whatever reason, I don't have the history. Basketball, tennis uh, were never included. Some of the fields were never included. Um, so between Casey and myself, we've gone through the agreement and kind of made it whole as to what the park consists of today <coughs> and who's responsible for what. Um, some of, of the items we have identified as splitting the costs. Some the district is fully <coughs> responsible for. Some the township is fully responsible for. Um, so in the draft agreement that you should have, it identifies the changes that are being proposed. And, and just to clarify one thing, there might be a possibility there might be some wording that is out of this agreement only because I was going through all my emails, and this is the latest revised agreement I could find, doing it very quickly tonight. So um, I will go back through that tomorrow and just send you guys any you know, update, but it's only a few words here and there, maybe some does and ofs and that kind of stuff. But overall, what you have in front of you is pretty much what Troy and I came up with <coughs> from um, what we were told from people that were here and the practices that were performed via the township and also via the school district since I've been here for five years. So um, what, what you have is, is what we've been operating under for as long as I know and from talking to past employees. So I'm not sure what, you know, what was discussed under the original agreement, but you know, what you have is, is what we, we've been doing. So maybe I can <coughs> shed a little light. I, I was on the Park and Rec Board when we, we drew this up. Um, so I, I, I see it from both sides. I see it from the, the township side. And I also see it from the district side now. Um, I mean, it was a great you know, joint effort because obviously the township spent a lot of money developing this, this park, um, you know, saved the, uh, the uh, district from, from putting uh, money in, into, into uh, developing a lot of these things. Um, and the, out, of, out of the deal, the township, Put a lot of maintenance on, onto the district, so you know, I think it was a win-win for everybody. Um, I mean, as far as the tennis and basketball, I don't think that basketball court was ever really meant for the middle school. That's more of a of a township recreational use, and we didn't have a tennis team until last year. So again, it was more for township residents. So really, that that was not really the intention. I would disagree with that. Well, I mean, and that, that might be that might be the case, but it's been using it. You know, but I mean, years. when we do basketball for a sport, we do it inside. I mean, we don't we don't play out on on the on the basketball court. And your gym classes don't use. The well, basketball gym court. class might might use it on occasion, um, but um, you know, and and it makes sense that that honestly that the you know whoever is mowing it should be one. You know, one person doing it. Agree. Um, you know, however, I think that the, the school district should be either compensated or something for that, or because uh, the original agreement was not was not part of that. Uh, but it makes sense. You know, I, I agree with that. It makes sense that somebody should, should if you're going to do it, that's someone do the whole thing. You know, but don't. we also, and I have two board members here. I think everybody would agree. You mentioned the amount of money that was put into well, yeah, I know. acquiring I know and constructing. Yeah. 
we have a hundred and eleven thousand dollar debt service annually on that yeah. park so it's not like we don't already have an expense for the park for us to also then pay for mowing on top of what we're already paying right but remember I, I think if you look at util utilization uh, i think it the school district does use it but you have a lot a lot of uh league baseball played on there the uh middle school does use some of that <laughs> there is some practice there um the gym you know gym classes do use some of that but i think if you really broke it down i, I think you, you'd see a lot of township usage on there as well as these the summer baseball leagues that and bring in tournaments and all that all that stuff and there's very and little income generated use of the facility I, I, I never said it was income. I said the there's other other of usage it is of it. Yeah. Daniel Boone Youth. Well, Daniel Boone, you know. But again, um, I think as far as what the middle school uses as, you know, whether there's, you know, Daniel Boone Youth Sports using it, that's not district, right? I mean, it's it's they're, not district per district se. Students, right? But they're also township students, right? I mean, township residents, right? So I, again, Some I think I think there's be, I think there's middle ground, but, but when this when this district was when this agreement was first set up, you're, you're you're what you're doing here is making major changes to it, which is fine, but we need to agree on on how we how we you know share the cost. That's all. And we haven't gotten any discussion, so that's yeah. why we're here. Yeah, and I think um, you know talking about sharing the costs. You know, some of our concerns would be more the infrastructure type of things. Perhaps we, you know, evaluate them to see uh, what's shared and what's totally on on the on the district. Um, like something like lights, I could see maybe that being a shared cost more than um, just solely on the district. But other than that, other than what I would, I would consider stuff that we could easily hash out in a short amount of time, maybe through a couple uh, back and forth, I don't see a whole lot of issue with this agreement. I mean, I wasn't around for the original agreement, so I can't speak to what was agreed upon or what wasn't agreed upon. Um, you know, obviously see what we, what we use. I see what the, you know, township people use. I know our, our middle school gym classes use the park. I'm going to say the park because they use various parts of it every day. They use that park very heavily because one of the conversations was when we had the walkie-talkies designed was, hey, we need walkie-talkies for the gym teachers because the gym teachers are on the other side of the park at times and we want to make sure that if they need us, they can get us. You know, so. Um, so I don't know all the spaces they use, but I can tell you there's times I see them in the basketball court, there's times I see them in the tennis court, there's times I see them in the field hockey court, sometimes they're down by the pavilion. I mean, I, you know, Nate can, you know, halters can kind of chime in too because I know there's many times they're mowing over there and they have to rearrange where they're mowing because gym class shows up and they're definitely inconvenienced at times by that gym class being out there. So um, <clears throat> I, I personally, would just like to maybe sit down and review some of the infrastructure things and and see if there's any way to discuss backstops and you know sh maybe shared costs on those type of things instead of it all being on the district well there are shared costs already i see i saw some of those you know on yeah. page four we do split fences benches yep. uh, backstops both those spaces and i think there are other areas where there are split costs right and i see you guys have the walking trail i mean i see you guys taking that we take care of the pavilions yep. page 3d there's a reimbursed district 50 percent kind of thing so which again that's that goes to your point of poles and lights right they're already split so it mean, just is a, we, we tried to go through here and, okay. and make it fair, in, in my opinion. I mean, the, the money's, money's coming out of the same pocket, whether, however you want to look at right. it. Right. 
I mean, uh, I mean, honestly, Amity, you know, pays the majority of school taxes in the district, and uh, you know, so it's coming out of out of Amity pocket, Amity pockets, taxpayers' pockets, one way or the other. Well, it's, it's how do we how do we make it? How do we get the best bang for the buck? I guess is what it is, right? I would say yes and no to that, though, because Union Township and Birdsboro's children also use the facility, so it shouldn't be all on Amity residents to pay for it. I think you'll find the majority of the kids probably have it as well. But I don't have those statistics. Okay. I will say that um, maintenance of the park has drastically improved. Thank you for making the change that you made as it was falling apart. <laughs> but it's much better. We appreciate that. I mean, I, I think going forward, yeah, I mean, we had we had discussed a few months trying to get a community together, but that obviously didn't, didn't get off the ground here. Uh, so that's what we need to do. We need to really sit down and kind of. Just uh, get, get I, I think it's really close. I mean, I, I do apologize. I didn't see yeah. I didn't see that fifty percent down there. Um, so thank you for pointing that out to me. Uh -huh. um, and we do actually have a committee for this agreement, mm -hmm. which Casey is a member of. So with his leaving the district, mm -hmm. you know, maybe that's an opportunity for a board member or you know, right. somebody to get appointed. And So we did meet. Usually it was George, George Smith, the AD, okay. and myself, since I've been here, have been the two members from the school district, and then they have two members <coughs> as well. So last Tuesday, was it Tuesday? They're all kind of remember. Well, anyway, last week, um, Eileen Schmidt and I went over, met with Troy, and we kind of gave her the crash course of the park. <laughs> and kind of overwhelmed her a little bit, but um, trying to just kind of explain to her who to talk to, for what. Uh, met with Pam, Kish, and uh, Pat uh, as well. So it was the, you know, it was the, the five of us, we had a great conversation. So I, Eileen's fully on board and understands, okay. you know, kind of who to talk to for what. I don't want to leave her hanging either, you know. Thank you. Um, being new to the district. So, um, you know, she has their cell phone numbers and, and everything. So, um, and to let you know as well, Pam Kish does all of the scheduling for the park, just to let you know that. They use our software program through Master Level Library. So all of the athletic games get, get automatically inputted in there. So. She's just a user on our on our system, uh, so. Okay, so moving moving forward, what we have to do is get this on next month's agenda, so they everyone can look at it at the first meeting and vote on it in the second meeting. Do you want to commit it over? I think so. That way, it, let's just get it in front of everybody, and let's <laughs> either get opinions so we can go back to Amity, or if there's no opinions, we get this voted on because. If, we don't get it on the agenda then the next mm -hmm. thing we know we're going to be november december still talking about this so does that fit your timeline all right where we we're at least going to get it on our agenda and then uh we can come back if, if there's input we, and i don't know how much input if any there would be maybe there will maybe there won't sure. we can then whoever that representative is going to reach out to you could be me it might be dr cooper or somebody else um, and then we can try to finish this up before uh november Wait, where are we? September. We can maybe get it finished before October. Sorry, I put my. Well, no, it'll be September, so September next September week. Yeah. September maybe the whole yeah. in the end. So October. Going. Maybe by October, this is behind us. So. Be difficult. Right. Does that work for you? It works. Does that sound like we can put that in our time table? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Troy. Appreciate Thank your you. time. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. All right, then we'll we'll go from the we'll go from the top and kind of hammer through some of these things. Yeah, that's right. I sent him that just to make sure that's what that what I have is what he truly has. I just have to make sure I one the final one that his board approved. His board is already approved. Just to let you guys know, his board has already approved a version of that. Okay. Um, I just could not find that in my emails. Okay, so, so we'll get it from him. And yeah, then, so I sent yep. one I had printed out for you guys. I gave it to Troy, 
to have him verify that that is the correct version. Okay. And if not, then he's going to send, so send me the, okay. the, the correct one. Perfect. Okay. Yep. Next on the list is high school auditorium HVAC unit replacement. Okay. Um, you have a quote in front of you. This is for the two units on the side of the auditorium that feed the auditorium. They are, you know, 1995 vintage. No different than the ones we have replaced for the gymnasium and the office. So this, these would be the, the next two in the priority list of ones that need to be replaced. Failing? They fail? They're, they're on the verge of failing, yes. Um, we, we have compressors that, that, are, that, are, that are to 20 years old. We haven't replaced any of them yet. Um, we've been band-aiding the unit pretty good with just motors and controls. It's, a lot of stuff is just starting, a lot of parts are starting to go on it. So I'm sure the, the compressors are not far behind. The other problem with the auditorium is there's really no controlled means to exhaust air out of that auditorium. There are two exhaust fans on the auditorium, but they're on contactors on the back wall with a handoff auto switch. Uh, I should say an on-off switch. So if the room gets too warm, if somebody knows where they are, they go hit the switch, they run the fan for a little bit and turn it off. So really in today's environments, the systems that you have currently installed, as I said before, the gym were designed for people who smoke. When smoking was allowed in, in schools and, and public places, you no longer need to move that much air for that. So the thought is, is to have these based on CO2 uh, detection. Mm -hmm. So the only time you exhaust air out of the space is if, if your CO2 level increases to the point where you need to bring in fresh air. So you're not constantly conditioning outside air and just wasting that money, you know, condition the, the, the space air. So Trainer and, train and I have gone back and forth probably for about six months on this, trying to figure out the, the, the best bang for the buck, and, and this, is where, this is where we're at. So the existing, uh, the existing exhaust fans, I believe, um, are going to be replaced and then have controls tied into the existing air handlers that are on the roof, on the, on the side wall of the, of, the, of the auditorium. They would also be adding curbing to the existing steel work that's there. So the unit will sit on top of the steel. So there's really no major steel work that needs to be done. They're able to, to design a curb to sit on top of that existing steel work. A large expense of this, believe it or not, is the crane. If, if, you, if you see where those units sit on that roof, there's no easy way to get to them. So we, are, uh, we figured out that the, the rear where the van truck is parked by the cooling tower, that McAdam parking lot is probably the easiest place to set up to pick both, both units. So. The case is, that does, does it make sense to relocate them for future? No, nah, you can't. The duct work's yeah. just way too involved. So it's, yeah. it's uh, if the trees weren't out front, Pick, but we'd have to lift up and over the trees or cut the trees down, which I don't think you want to do, and so on and so forth. So the uh, they're just not a, they're not in a, at an ideal spot. It's just you know before the building was renovated, it was probably pretty easy, but now it's now it's just not. So um, it's a fairly sizable crane that, that needs to be used for that. But this quote is the same as the quotes we had for the gym, the rooftop units. Train is taking care of everything. Electric ductwork tie-ins. There's some ductwork modifications that have to be done, re-insulation of, of, of the ductwork that is there. So the, uh, the good thing is prior to us re-insulating that ductwork when we did the roof project, we inspected the ductwork. The ductwork is in very good shape. It's not rusted. There's not holes in it, so they can tie into what is there. There's some modifications they have to make, of course, with outside air and return air and, and that kind of stuff. But uh, there again, this is for train to be the PM on the, on the project, to manage the project, start to finish. Um, Berkshire Mechanical will be doing their mechanicals again, like we did before. Um, Denny's Electric will do the electrical for them, and then they will bring a company in to do, their, 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 their controls company will come in and, and do, do the, uh, the control work, and then they'll do startup and so on and so forth. So the reason I want to bring it to your attention now is our window is closing to do this before heating season. So 
if we're going to do this, this is definitely a fall project that we want to do because we can use the two units in the LGI to condition the space. We just leave the accordion doors open um, and those two units will run pretty hard for the days that these units are removed, but you can at least manage the space temperature with the two units in, 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 in the LGI. So you won't have a huge impact, so that's why we kind of need to do it in the fall. So there's not a big heat load or air conditioning load in the space. Kathy, can I ask, as far as our budget, uh, we see the number of uh, basically 145,000. Where are we at in our budget, and can we absorb 145,000 expense? I think and that's pretty close to where I'm at with the capital. I, that's, I, where, that's about where he was at. Okay. I think I had 150 or 160 or 170 in there. Okay. Possibly, so. Because, again, I think that's something we, we got to put on the agenda for everyone to look at. I don't want to drop a $145,000 yeah. expense on them tonight. Right. I don't think that's fair. Um, but that's a question I would expect they would ask. So we need to show them, yes, yes, we've budgeted right. this capital and here it is. So the funds are there. It's not like we're going 145000 over our capital budget. So right. that would be good to have. And I figured since we have the two new units on the gym, we can kind of push off those two units, those two other units to, to replace because those two units are still working fairly well. Um, but these, I would say, are your next, are, are your two next on, on the priority list. That won't, that if these fail, you're in trouble right. kind of thing. If the other units fail for the gymnasium, you're going to get through heating season without a problem and most of the air conditioning season without a problem with the two new units if you're down to two. I mean, we pretty much ran for a year and a half on two of them anyway. I don't want to get too crazy and spend the district's money, but if they right. have the crane there already, is it worthwhile to get a price to at least see what those other two units I, on I, the I gym will cost? Them. Yeah. Because if they have the crane there, it, I don't know, it could, I mean, when we see the cost, we might just say it's just un, undo, not doable. Right. But I'd like to at least see the cost that way if everything's mobilized. Maybe it makes sense financially. Okay. Maybe it doesn't. But yeah. let's at least look at the. I know, I know you're. It's a good point. No, I'll email. I'll, I'll email Andrew. Thank you. Yeah. Especially if the crane's the largest yeah. portion of it. Two Do you guys have any questions or concerns on the train? <coughs> is next yeah. year. On the unit? Do I want a train? Yeah, I know. Train. <laughs> that that was look, look up my face. You, did you put stock in them? Should. Oh, you train. know what I forgot on the, on the list? That'd be conflict of interest. Yeah. <laughs> what would a facilities meeting be without well, not doors? Oh, this one's a good one too, isn't it? Well, let's uh, <laughs> let's keep. We got to hammer down this list. Yep, so okay. um, let's go to the high school parking lot trench drain replacement. Um, the the long trench drain that's in the middle of the high school parking lot along the light poles mm -hmm. is a prefab, thin walled concrete trench. It is starting to fail. I have epoxy together about six locations of that in the last eight months. Um, so the, the, we're going to need to definitely look at talking to Union Township to find out if that trench drain is even needed because we have storm sewers along the, the wall, mm -hmm. as I'll call it the wall curb. Right. So I'm not sure if that trench drain is truly needed. It is going to be a maintenance nightmare to and very costly to replace that, 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 that trench drain. We had a big chunk come out the other day, and I think I used eight tubes of epoxy to kind of put the wall back together and, and get the trench drain to kind of stay. So right. uh, luckily, I use a, it, the Hilti Hilt epoxy I use does not fail. So it's not going anywhere. So, um, but that's going to be something. That's just an FYI that you're, you're definitely, this well, is that's a, a facility thing that needs to happen. That's a discussion we're probably going to want to have at Union Township soon, because obviously with the freeze thaw coming, right. the damage will be more. Uh, should we, Dr. Cooper, how do you want to approach that? Do you want to sit down with, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to sit in the meeting with maybe Union Township and meet yeah. them on site and try well, we'll to convince them to, okay. Mm -hmm. set something up with I mean, them. My, my recommendation is fill it with stone and McAdam over top of it. I mean, yeah, it's, it's just, it's I, I don't think you need it. Nothing else really has to be done. It can be used as fill in there. I would agree. Go. I mean, if this was in our municipality, we'd tell you to. And Halters will be very so glad to see the yeah. trench drain yeah. go away from yeah. Lowey. So. More, <laughs> more of it. We still have the old the original engineering <laughs> from that. That would be good to see even where it drains too. Probably drains out to where we run. It's always muddy out there in the front there. I think it does. Yeah. yeah the way the thing slopes, 
it's the transition between two lots. I can't yeah. imagine there's a whole lot of water gets in there. I can't either. No. No. Probably not. Yeah. It's more of a trip hazard. I bet your insurance company would want you to get rid of it. Get rid of it as well. <laughs> right. All right. <clears throat> we will we will follow up with Union Township on that. And then we'll get back to the committee. High school annex gym bleacher removal. That definitely needs to happen within the next year. They're starting to break. The wood faces are starting to break in some of the areas from baseball and softball practice and stuff. Um, I don't want to see a kid have one break and get a big splinter in their arm or their back or something like that. So, um, however you guys discussed, want to. We, discuss yeah, stuff, we, didn't we? we discussed it, but we never really. I, I was unable to find any schools that had an RFP for removal and, and disposal. So, um, I kind of struck out. Um, I reached out to all the ones I, I knew to talk to. So We could almost probably make a fairly generic one because I think you'd get a lot of uh, potentially Amish and Mennonites coming right. in to, to bid on that project. So. There you go. Get us a price. That was... Um, no. Can, can you look it over and just no. throw Park some Park type of an Park estimate? Park. Yeah, Annex. Yeah. Annex. Yeah, Annex. No, all right. How many sets are in, in your budget at all? Uh, how many sets? Yeah, how many I think I think they're still on both sides. I you believe. Have. Yeah, we're gonna need a yeah. we're gonna need an, an estimate anyway, uh, and then if we have to go out, I'm we, not sure. if we have to bid it or whatever, you guys would have to you know follow yeah, up bidding it. procedures. <laughs> all right. Own Sorry. Own it. <laughs> it's both sides, right? I forgot. Yeah. Both yeah. I'll honor that. I'm Peter 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 Peter. Peter. I thought it was <laughs> All right. One. Next up, we'll keep rolling. District office move. I've just been putting forward an information to Kathleen for the vendors I've been talking to in regards to moving the district office to the annex for the partitions and cubicles and, and that kind of stuff. So that's that's just an FYI if, if you want to add anything as well. Got some measurements <clears throat> to get some ideas of as cheap as possible. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, uh, we're we're in the process. Just you know, as a follow up, um, uh, we have an organization that looks like that. Pretty confident they're going to be renting a space over at the district office now. Uh, a good bit of the one hallway wrapped around that Kathy's office. Okay. Good. Um, and that'll commence Aprilish. Yeah, of the other leases. Other lease expires. The first, okay. So the end of March. that'll that'll clean that whole, take care of that whole side in between River Rock and, and we've had some interest in some other parts of the building as well. I haven't got the commitment that we have with this other organization Good. for okay. April, but um, that would facilitate us needing to move somewhere. There's space over do, to high do, school. Do we have the original plans that were drawn up to go over there a couple years ago, a few years back? That was it wasn't that, that was in the annex that was oh, the two yeah. annex cafeterias yeah um, this, this 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 is going to be using half of the i'll say the band wing the, the back the of the f wing okay towards the gymnasium <clears throat> right. so that that half more or less are we, we going to i think we should punish him and move into so it's yes that area <laughs> there's two yeah. sets of doors that <laughs> were priced <laughs> right. doors 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 no. <clears throat> Well, you have to, and that, that's going to have card access as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And I met with um, Union Township's fire code guy. Um, he is fine with us putting sets of double <coughs> doors that um, both doors will open into the school, not like here where the doors open opposite way for means of egress in case of fire. He's fine with those doors being locked from the, the school side going into admin. Mm -hmm. The admin side will have panic bars mm -hmm. for egress. Okay. For egress. So we, I've already had that approved. That, that's, okay. that's, already, that's already, and then the only other question he had was the slope of the parking lot to have handicapped parking at the end of, at by door 24 needs to be 2% greater or less uh, for a handicapped spot. So he believes by looking at it, and he's not requiring it. He just recommends you might want to have one back there for handicap accessibility. Right. Right. Thanks, um, the yeah. upper part of that towards the courtyard, he thought by looking at it was about 2%. If not, he just recommended going out like 20, 30 feet, milling a trench, and then just top coating that whole area back there to make it a 2% grade for the handicap. So. All right. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Uh, keep moving right along high school batting cage frame the existing batting cage in the annex gymnasium is on cables if we remember for whomever was involved that was the eighteen hundred dollar batting cage that I had to put five grand worth of steel up to hang the cables so the the cables I have pulleys for the cables to replace 
what they sent us, the ride on the cables. Long story short, um, every school district pretty much takes their batting cage and they hang <coughs> from the ceiling on electronic hoist, so on and so forth. Dag Dag Dagler Whiting is the company who we use for our ble bleacher parts, and um, they had them look at it. Budget installed 21.5. And then all they require is that we provide them the key switch on the wall, powered key switch on the wall, and they'll, they'll wire to that switch. So um, you're looking 21500 bucks estimate to furnish the cage, hang, install the, the, what needs to be hung uh, up in the ceiling, pulleys, the whole nine yards. All right. So uh, there again, that's just more of a con conversation piece. So it's, you guys what are they start. doing now? It's, it's, it's on three cables that run the, the width of the, of the gymnasium. <clears throat> so when, when they purchased it, every other loop has a pulley. And then there's just a, a steel loop that hangs up there. Well, that, that has started to wear through. And the pulleys have actually started to wear through to the point where they've broken. And the cables have gotten intertwined. So there's a platform lift up there now for the maintenance staff. The pulleys are down in the basement. To go up for every cable and put a pulley on for every cable so it's safer because right now it's not very safe this it's it's not going anywhere it's not going to fall right. over it's just very hard to wheel down and wheel back so right now it takes up a good portion of the other one part of the gym do i have it in there probably not or do i mm -mm. Well, it's probably not on there because when I made that list, that batting so, cage so was probably fine yet. What, what did they use prior to that? They had the batting cage in the small part. So if you if you remember how that annex gym is set up, you have the main gym, then you have that little bump in the area that's lower. They had about a 65-foot cage in there, and that, of course, was deemed unsafe because the cage had worn out and balls were kind of flying everywhere. So the sports boosters... I believe it was a sports booster donated the cage and the cage was like a two thousand dollar cage and the hardware and the cables i said where are we going to hang it from so i know where to hang it from because the basketball nets retract so i couldn't hang it along the bleachers because the basketball nets were in the way i couldn't hang it in the middle because of the full folding door so, so the only place i could we, hang it can we go back to what we had well then you have to take the chain link fence that's there uh, down and the weights yeah. that are in there. <laughs> oh, that's right, the, the weights. Yeah, yeah, I remember, Those were free I, too. I remember the weights. Yeah. How much was it? 21. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to, could, if that's not state you know, contract, we might. I mean, it's safe, it's just not easy to operate. Right. It's got to be fit out. So, uh, all right. Well, perhaps the boosters are going to contribute. Keep again. moving along. Several buildings, parking lots, church will split costs for BEC. So, just following up with the discussion of bringing a, uh, an architect slash engineer in to assess the parking lots and sidewalks and so on and so forth. Part of that conversation was BEC. The church has, and I believe Kathleen has the quotes. Do you have the quotes for the seal coding? Um, the church that is renting the uh, BEC would like to have their park of the parking lot seal coded and new lines painted. They were asking if the school district would split the cost 50-50 for that for that cost they would be doing the entire parking lot i believe mm -hmm. and then they would they're just asking for the, the school to split the cost with them the entire parking lot the like in the front lot. and the side yeah. Yeah. everything yeah. everything yeah. and it wasn't it the, wasn't that expensive in either. the back no, no. Up, just just the, <clears throat> that's not just parking the up there technically from the yeah. where no, you drive in the lined. driveway from that sidewalk oh, that's right. right there at the storm sewer that and then all the way route to the front and that was on the agenda. It's on the cow to be voted on. If right. you guys are all right with it, they can go ahead. Well, the only reason we're going forward with that is because they're going to be splitting the cost. Right. So it's a and total. And we, we need, they need to get on the schedule to be done this, if they're going to be done. Yeah. They're going, they they were hoping to do it in August, but we didn't but, meet. Yeah, we didn't meet. So it's like at max, I think, was it 56 or something? It's on yeah. the cow. Yeah. Or they, it's on the agenda to see if they vote on it. Right. Do, do we get back other quotes? Uh, I made him get three. It was five. no, no. I, I mean for the for the other buildings. The other buildings. I, I, as far I did the, not, the engineering work. I was not able to get anybody else in. They were they, everybody was just so darn busy. Okay. They said no, no offense. We're we're probably six eight months away from getting anybody free to, to come and assess it. So 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 do we want to get on the the agenda to approve the SDE one because I mean, we we want that to get that rolling for next year, right? Mm -hmm. 
Expo needs to be done. Okay. So we should put that on for next month, what you're saying? Okay. I agree. Because with the last I recall, we were hoping to get other engineering quotes. Right. So uh, I understand I mean, some of those lots are pretty, there's some gaping holes. Yeah, we're going to lose them soon. We're going to we'll lose them. Yeah. And we can't even get somebody to look at them for six months. Mm -hmm. Well, SDE can. Well, I think if you uh, get an engineering firm, they'll get you, they can get you. We, they can work us up an estimate, <coughs> and then I think at that point you can start. I think if these companies knew we were ready to move on this project, you'd right. probably get some people bidding on it. Yeah. But I mean, if you put it out to bid, you're going to get bidders. Sure. So, but we're running against the clock as far as I mean, October would probably be it for paving. And, and I'll be honest with you, right. with with the change of outsourcing companies and stuff, my June and July were pretty much kind of a wash with just right. all the transition right. that I had. So I just, yeah, it was not, not no offense, it wasn't high on my priority yeah. list. I'll, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm was, looking forward, you know, not back at this yeah. point. Right. I'm just saying, yeah. Yeah. I don't lose, I'm just letting you know. I didn't, <coughs> I didn't mean to let it sit, but I mean, right. you lose them, it's way more expensive. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, <coughs> and if they're that bad, you've basically lost them anyway. You're right. right. So you're, unfortunately, <coughs> yeah. They're a trip hazard. Yep. All right, so we have that on <coughs> the radar. Thank you. Sorry, I just keep piling it on. Yeah, there. Welcome to the district. Uh, yeah. With yeah, that, we'll, go to the, we'll go to the riser purchase. I assume this is uh, abundant life for a riser purchase. Yeah, hundred dollars each. A lot of missing parts, and they're basically disposed items. Yeah. We're going to dispose of them anyway, but they'll take them. We'll have them sign the thing that we're not responsible. Okay. And they'll buy for 100 each is eleven hundred dollars. Okay, so everybody's okay. eleven risers at a hundred dollars each. Yes. We're not even sure we have all the parts. They don't even match up to what we have. <coughs> okay. They're 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 the different heights. So it's nothing we well. could take in the district and reuse. We're, you're hundred percent sure on that. There's nothing that I would want to use for a lot of use. Okay. Let's put it that way. Okay. Now up above when we were doing the um, did you do the Birdsboro tenant update? No, not yet. No. no. Okay. So we'll have to put that, I guess, on the, I mean. I didn't have it on the agenda. Yeah, so we'll put it on, we'll for, put it on for September. For yeah, the count. And they're in Birdsboro too, so it's not like we have to move them for them, so. Oh, that's good. All right. Uh, let's do the tenant update HVAC issues. Uh, and then we'll go to the masonry, and then we'll... Um, tenant update was just more or less, and, and HVAC issues. We've had some issues over there with the old pneumatic system. Some of the information I was told know. by the former staff was not accurate. Uh, I was trying to switch, long story short, I was doing something that was wrong, even though it seemed to work the last couple of years. I think I got lucky the last couple of years. This time it wasn't working, so Berkshire Mechanical came in, one of the old timers, and there again, there's very few people that work on that stuff anymore. Uh, I had to actually wait for him to come back from a two week vacation to, to, to get him in there. So um, we dug through a lot of things. He pointed out my mistakes. I was like, wow, it worked before. He goes, I'm not sure how, but it did anyway. So we believe we have everything working correctly again for the gym area. Everything was working fine for the church except for the gym. Of course, the most important part, I couldn't get the air conditioning. So it seems to be working fine. Devin has not called me back saying it's, it's an issue. We've been now a week and a half almost into this that we, I think we have it. So I'm just making you guys aware that some of those spaces could be become a problem if you're going to keep tenants in, the, in that. <coughs> You know, we already knew we have HV. So Correct. I'm just saying. I'm just. I'm just reminding you guys. And, and Aaron, as you know, with 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 the uh, with fitness and splash, just let the board know we've installed four dehumidifiers <coughs> and drilled through the outside walls and ran the hoses outside. <coughs> Those dehumidifiers run 24/7 to try to maintain a humidity level in the fitness and splash area that doesn't cause the ductwork to sweat and doesn't well, just cause issues. Splash, right? Well, we don't well have it's more of the boot camp. Yeah. 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 No, no splash yeah. in there, hopefully. So, um, we had a few splashes. Kyle is the, is the trainer there, yep. correct? Yep. Uh, he's been great. He's been really keeping me informed as to how everything has been working. 
it seems we've nipped it in the butt um, mm -hmm. at this point in time. So I, I think we're going to be okay now that this weather's changing. We, we should be much better. Yeah, the gentleman came out and talked to you. Did he mention the fact that you were talking about blocking off some of how that water's being pulled into the building? Well, no. Um, but what we have done is we have eliminated <coughs> a lot of the pneumatics controls going into the building. So we have pretty much disassembled everything for the second and third floor because we had so many leaks up there I couldn't keep my compressor running. Mm -hmm. So that was part of the problem as well. So um, if you have any plans moving forward of using those upper floors, you will need to get somebody in to re-energize a lot of that. And it's just a matter of just a couple of plugs, I mean, a couple of brass plugs and some tubing and stuff. But, but there's a lot of stuff that has been taken apart in order to isolate our compressed air so we could get the proper air to the gym units and so on we, and so we, forth. We know where to get you. That's fine. My <laughs> number's not changing, so it's, it's fine. Um, but I just, I, I just, with me leaving, that is one of my concerns that I, 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 I don't want to see tenants being in there and, and you guys having a major mold issue um, if things aren't working correctly. So uh, as Aaron knows, he's, he's notified us of a couple of issues. We've gone in and we've turned those areas off and and that's going to be a yeah, constant find the thing. leaks man we're good at finding yeah. the leaks and that's going to just be a continual thing um with that with that space yeah. so uh, so that's that's what i want to let you guys and know. that leads right into the next discussion birdsboro masonry discussion well the, the one last thing is oh, yeah. just partitions. partitions oh sorry you want to paint the partitions oh, that's, that's right. that's, i was wondering what that was for no, if they okay paint the partitions there's a possibility they could be non-usable in the future they want to split the cost of replacement if they paint them from a financial standpoint if you're going to paint them knowing that there could be a potential loss you need to be fully responsible for those replacements but that's my opinion in yeah. your vote. they have like a wallpaper covering on them kind of like a heavier cloth wallpaper yeah. it's like that pinkish purple kind of color yeah. um, and as i said when, when we <coughs> discussed about bringing the church in i said you can absolutely paint them you know, there, there's nothing to say you can't paint them. It's just, is the board willing to accept that that ownership of that maintenance down the road when that paint starts to peel, that you're now going to have a, a wall covering that you need to replace or repaint and continue to repaint. My thinking would so, be, if we ever got to the point where we were gonna put students back in that school, I think we would probably at that point replace those partitions because they're so old as it is. They're 30 did, years old. And they're cloth. And they use them for, um, uh, like shirts and stuff when they when they I think when the they're in the cast the cafeteria right yeah right they work fine they work fine, <laughs> they work fine. <laughs> yeah. aesthetically they don't like the color they yeah. just don't like the color and I just don't want to see our the district right for child color choice you get to choose a color <laughs> <laughs> so your your concern is that how long will that paint last before it it could last twenty years thirty years being inside. I, I, you know, I, I just is, want to make you guys aware. Is it going to adhere to that? Yeah. Here, they'll use a special paint and yeah, a special yeah. bonding and the whole nine yards. But it yeah. is something that will be. Make them paint them to an acceptable color you know. on the way out. I mean, oh, they're know. not painted now. They they're want to paint them. Yeah. And the paint is going to be the problem. Right. Possibly. 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 If it cracks and starts to peel. And maybe put a time limit on it. If they look bad and. Right, like a prorated. That's another consideration, but I don't think the district should even half going into it. That's not. All right. That's not reasonable. That's for them. Yeah, I think we should sit down with them and talk about some type of prorated schedule and and see what they come back with. Again, I mean, I've seen them. If we put kids in there, is that something we replace anyway? Maybe. I mean, if you're doing a facelift in that cafeteria, you're most likely that would come along with it. But I still think if they're going to do it, there should be some proration. I agree. And I will tell you, the church has not skipped any cost with anything they've done in that building. Yeah. It, it, it looks it looks phenomenal. It really does in their area. Um, it, it looks great. Yeah. It really does. And I'm, I'm all for making sure we're covered. I really am. But if the doors are 30 years old, I mean, how much would the replacements be? You know, could, would they want to? I know I wouldn't want to put the whole bill for a 30 year old door, for a brand new door just to be painted it. But there's, I'm sure there's got to be something. And you can recover those. those. Yeah, we can, there's got to be something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's got to be something to yeah. come up with. Yeah, I think that's something we can, we can probably yeah. sit down, have a discussion with them, and mm -hmm. come good back. Question. We don't want to come back. Okay, well, right. good.
Alright. I can just jump in one thing before yep. you go to the, your Birdsboro Masonry. Let's discuss the Monocacy door only because I want to get that out there so we don't fire door. We don't have we don't forget to do it. Um, the fire door for Monocacy is a roll-up garage door. That is just past the library as you walk down the main hallway. <coughs> that came down on Tuesday or Wednesday of last week. And when we went to put it back up, it would not go up. So overhead door was called in. We found out that the internal gears in the spline, and long story short, the door was junk. The reason why the door is junk after 13, 15 years is because I found out two months ago when we went to operate the door, it was banging and cracking in the whole nine yards. I said to the guys, what's, what's it? oh, it always does that. So I don't know how many years that that door was not working correctly. Came from the clock company. Um, <laughs> so well, the I mean, door right now is was cut in half and removed. It was yeah, it was okay. Thursday or Friday because it was right before I left. Uh, we could not have school with the door down. W it was, what is this fire door supposed to do? So what the fire door does, literally, long story short, is it cut. The fire code states only so much of your building can be permitted to burn at one time. That's the fire code, so many square foot. So since we are 85,000 square feet, the fire code states 52,000 square foot in that area can burn fire at one time based on the 03 fire code. Which so is it's, what that it's supposed to come called. down automatically, the fire alarm automatically is off. Right. Fire. So we had a we had seal a, off so it doesn't yeah. spread. So it doesn't spread. So uh, Steve Loomis from Amity Township is searching the newest fire code, which is 2015 for Amity Township, to see what the requirement is at this point in time. That school was built under the 2003 fire code. There have been two updates since. I had a long conversation with Steve the other day <coughs> after I gave Brett the bad news that you know we, we needed a new, a new door. We didn't have a choice. So overhead door was in. Overhead door is a CoStars vendor. So um, the, the problem is that door sits, the track is inside the block, so we couldn't even remove it because it physically could not come okay, out. You gotta cut the block out then, right? Correct, you have to cut the block out in the whole nine yards. There's drywall, and I can I can uh, show you guys pictures then. There's there's drywall ceiling up to the overhead door. There's not even drop ceiling. So that has to be removed. I mean, yeah. it's, it's there, there's heating pipes in the way. There's a sprinkler line there, smoke detector, speaker, the whole nine yards. So there's all kinds of bad things in that area. The problem is, too, the heating pipes. That's the picture. Yeah. The heating pipes are glycol, so I can't even drain <laughs> the heating pipes because I'd have to bring a tanker in to recover all the glycol. So hopefully okay. Steve Loomis comes back and says we can put a much smaller door in. At that point in time, that's what we'll have overhead door quote. Well, we could put a bifold. <laughs> Well, and we're going to look at putting an overhead door in with a man door like the ones are at Amity Intermediate. So if the door does come down and for whatever reason we can't get it up, put the door back up, we still have a man door for means of egress. Um, so there's a lot of moving parts with this at this point in time. Overhead door was down on, just my days are kind of run together. Last week we had a long conversation with them about what our options are. Uh, they've taken probably an hour's worth of, of tape measure measurements and, and they, they know what they have to work with so we're just waiting for Steve had gotten his knee scoped last week so he's out of work for a week so he's hoping to have me an answer before I leave okay um, so it is not going to be cheap no. and I will show you guys the pictures I think I sent Brent the pictures well, we, we saw the picture <laughs> um, you know, it, it's it's, but it, it's it is what it is. So, so, so I just want to say for my 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 last facilities meeting, I got the most expensive door in the whole school district to replace. So Jeff Scott will love me for that. One. You you you. you, you. But it's a different different door company. But it's a door. It's all right. It's a door. Yes. Um, why is it open now? I mean, why wouldn't you just block it in and make an egress like a couple door a door? Is it open for a reason? I don't know. I don't know if you would is. see this space, you would understand. It's the main hallway from the front to the back of the school. Right. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's yeah, just the door that'll come down to seal gotcha. the yeah, fire. It's, it's at the worst spot possible. It's yeah. Firewall. Yep. Yeah. So, go back into the all right. But that's that. Since so we're talking about expensive items, we'll just keep moving right along. Birdsboro Masonry discussion. <coughs> we, uh, I know Kevin, again, I appreciate all your effort on this. Uh, the last meeting we kind of tasked uh, Dr. Cooper, again, welcome to the district. Uh, 
with pursuing after we we had some timelines and I believe Kathy was a part of it as well so you guys want to give us an update on that yeah we uh, reached out to um, CD, CDC yeah and yes. they indicated that they would uh, grant us a 12-month extension on the contract that they gave us give us a little bit more time we need to get what they recommended is getting some uh, get an engineer in uh, to take a look at the section that uh, you were talking about with the towards Caitlin and the window um, to get uh, a scope on that that part of the work um, to get that for you now. We have not gotten an engineering firm yet. Yeah, it's a mess. I call them. Got to yeah. call them up to get them out there to take yeah. a look at it and, um, and you know get get some price. Yeah, yeah we don't have to go with the big one. It could be one, you know. Big. Some of the local ones are big, but I mean, we don't have to go with who we were using for the whole district. Is it possible to break that project into pieces then so that we could maybe get it on the schedule for spring? Because it's not going to happen for fall to repoint it. Right. That would be the best time to do it is in the springtime. Like repoint in the spring and then. Get some of that repointing part done, and then if you have to do the engineering part and redo some of that masonry in the backside, put that towards the tail end of the year. Because mm -hmm. that's really. Yeah, because that'll help with the moisture problem, some of the moisture problem. Yeah. Yeah, there was all those, and again, the in, they indicated that it's not coming in from all the um, weep holes. We there's just there's just spots that right. yeah, it's going to help with the moisture for sure. And if you guys want any help on that, I don't want to volunteer, but I'm sure Kevin would be willing to <laughs> kind of rehash with you uh, the whole process. Yep, so if you need yeah. if you need kind of the whole <coughs> right. kit could be. <coughs> You, know, you can reach out to Kevin. He took a lot of time there. So if you don't mind. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, there's another line item on here called Skate Park slash Hope Rescue Mission. Uh, skate Park kind of was a, a brief discussion. Um, the borough is looking at potentially uh, putting in a skate park. So they were looking at different locations. We have a couple locations. And a committee was formed, and someone on the committee said, well, what about the elementary center? So we did reach out to uh, Casey and Dr. Cooper to kind of talk about it. And kind of after reevaluating it, there's a lot of problems. If the borough is going to build a skate park and put it on school property, you've got who's the, who's the responsible insurer, who's the responsible maintenance. There's a lot of different factors that come in that I think make it too cumbersome of a project to do it that way. Uh, I believe the committee is leaning towards somewhere else in the borough. Um, so we don't really have to talk about that unless they really want to push that issue, but I don't, I don't think they will. The other part of that, uh, we have Hope Rescue Mission. Uh, they had reached out to the district to see if we had any desks and old desks or cabinets uh, that we're not using. Yes. Um, <laughs> should have called me a year ago. <laughs> well, they they've done some major renovations. I, I you know all disclosure. I do volunteer there um, from time to time. So uh, they uh, did some major renovations, but they're looking for desks for some of their staff and and some uh, those cabinets or whatever. Uh, obviously, just walking around BC, there's stuff there that I think they could utilize. We have old furniture that I don't think is ever going to make it into another school district building that you know they can put outside their waiting room when people are waiting inside for meals um, so I didn't know if you know we could compile a list and maybe get some pictures obviously they would like to know if we would donate it you know, they're not in a position to be purchasing well don't we have a list with that information for what Lauren was working on before he left I'd have to go back and look and see if he has I don't know no there, there's there, there are no inventory of what's in there no, there's no inventory of what's up there I can Other all I can tell you is Every classroom is kind of its own storage room, so you know there's, there's cabinets there's, in the one, there's yeah. teacher yeah. desks in the other, there's student desks in the other, there's chairs in the other, there's tables in one, <laughs> tables in basement. one. Some a couple of the basements have stuff stored in there. On no, we emptied all of them out. Everyone so I think, I, I just think, you know, we could pinpoint exactly what they want, but you're probably looking at a couple of desks and so a couple full. of <laughs> That's a no-brainer. On the second and third floor with no HVAC. Second and floor. Yeah, exactly. It's a warehouse. We don't need any air conditioning. Are you guys okay with Dr. Cooper and I bringing back some suggestions and bringing it to the board? Go for it. Okay. All right. So that ends that. So then the next uh, topic would be our update from Interstate. Uh, I know our representatives from Interstate are here. 
So welcome to uh, the first facilities meeting. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Hi everybody, I'm Bob Weller, I'm with Interstate, president of the company, Dave Leeds, and Andrew. So, um, so uh, we thought, good opportunity to come by. It's only been, uh, what, about eight weeks now? Seven weeks? Yeah, yeah. Seven weeks. And uh, kind of give you an update and see if you have any questions, you know, as far as that's concerned. Um, we tremendous progress getting ahead of uh, you know, the school year with some of the floor care. I did uh, bring a couple pictures in if um, anybody needs to take a look and review those. I guess he's around. So he'll be over here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have four sets. The idea is always challenging initially in, in, in coming in and getting some of the staffing and some of the things worked out. Um, we recognize that. I think we have probably about 15 or, or 7, 17 people that we've really been doing some very, very strong recruiting over, uh, say, the, the last seven weeks. And it's paid good dividends. So we're going through that process right now with everybody. While we're a little slow with the, the, the staffing aspect in the beginning, we certainly picked it up you know, towards the end because we had some deadlines. How many? What? What's? How many staff should you have? I think that the number was. You should have thirty-three. And 30. how many do you have? We currently have twenty-two. Twenty-two. Yes. And we have about seventeen that are going through that. I think we just had. Oh, we sent. Two yeah, we just sent two over yeah, like two, two hours ago. We're basically the child abusers are holding us up. All the fingerprints are done, all the TVs are test, tests are done. We're basically just waiting on an entire list for child uses to come back. So as they're coming back, we're sending them over to get them cleared to bring them out. I, this might be a stupid question, but I'd ask it anyway. We signed a contract. You all sat in that room. I was in the room. Yep. We'll, we'll be there. We got this mm -hmm. covered. And we walk into it with our pants around our knees, basically tripping over ourselves. And we're still, today, 11 short. How'd that happen? Well, basically, we brought four crews in to try and catch up for the summer cleaning. I'm not going to recruit cleaners when I need four people. And, so, and, and when we're not recruiting people that are looking for summer jobs or anything else, we're right. in this for the long haul. So if you look at it from the perspective of we're bringing in people that are, that are paid higher wages, that are floor care experts, and we brought some from, from Springfield School District and some of the other areas, surrounding areas that we service, and that's really the way to do this. We want to time it because I can't put all these people in there in the beginning of the summer that really can't do the floor care aspect. Now, I don't disagree with you, but if the, if the contract calls for 33 people, whatever it is. Well, we're, we're actually, you know, we're significantly over okay. in the second portion. So, Casey, were they over in the beginning now? No. Not in the beginning. No, 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 no. But the second half, it actually worked significantly more in your favor. So overall, when you, when you mesh the two together. And I think that they sent that over to you, somebody from my office, uh, Kathleen. Mm -hmm. um, so when you look at it, we're actually over in staffing. Yeah, I don't, I'm not close enough to it to really be able to tell it. But what we've been hearing. Well, so they're, over, they're, so over, the 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 they're over the staffing the days they bring the additional staff in. They're not staffed properly for the everyday operation of the school district. But that, so. that's all coming together this week. A little bit of a delay, but we have, the, we have sufficient people here, and they're able to work overtime, and that's on us, you know, to be able to do it. But we're all set. So we'll have everything taken care of by the end of the week, and everything will be really strong going into next week. So you think by the end of the week, then you plan to be at full staff? By the end of this week, by the end of next week, maximum. Okay, I'm, I'm not, not going to set myself to a holiday weekend, but okay. quite honestly, like I, I said, said we're saying contract. We're saying contract. You're, contract. You're willing to sign it, and you agree to do X. We're, we're actually, nobody here prevented you from doing anything. We're, we're actually good on that. But we've done this. We've done this enough times, and you, you can shoot yourself in the foot getting out to a, a quick early start, and then not having the right people in the right people position to really start that. Well, we need I to bring in floor care people. I, 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 I understand bringing in <clears throat> specialists, but to say you shoot yourself in the foot. I would think coming into a district that you obviously knew we had some issues with our previous one. You know, I would want to come in and hit a home run, 
mm-hmm. staffing wise and different things and you know we, we have a meeting and we find out okay we, we hired you and you don't have staff you can't come in and say you know we're gonna slow roll this so we look good that that you, you don't look good when you sign a contract and you don't have the staff committed and one of you was supposed to put me in my place tonight I don't know who that was who's that supposed to be <laughs> I have no idea. Okay. I was just curious because, you know, Danny Boone is a small community and I was told someone's going to put me in my place tonight. So I was just just wondering who that was. Okay. It's discouraging from the standpoint of, again, I understand, you know, before, after, that was our main issue. And I remember sitting in that meeting. Are you sure you can be sad? Guys, you know I mean? we're 100%. So you, you get where we're, we're yeah. going. It's like, we're, are you, we're 100% you promise that, you know, you promise to be faithful the rest of your life. Yeah, I kind of promise. Yeah, all right, yeah, I promise. That's where it's at, you know. You're, so. you're good here. We're in for the long haul. Each of the schools. Well, you, you say that, but you've got to understand our concern is when we sign a contract and you're not even in 30 days and you're not at that contract, you we, can't say we were, we're good we for were the not, long haul we were because. not for that portion. We, we significantly were for the other portion of that. And, and we did have a little bit of communication, you know, but with that. But we're playing a little semantics because you're either staffed. Or you're not staffed. Look, look at look at the condition of some of the schools right now, and and I, I ask you, does it does it look better than what it did? Well, that, that that's that's yeah, really shiny. I mean, are we are we oh, at the I, point I, where we should be? Let me just answer that real quick. Shiny hallways does not mean a clean building. Um, if you go into the classrooms, and David was there when they brought their floor crew in, their experts in, um, and they did monocacy. Sorry, the primaries building the first time around. It was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. And Andrew and David both got phone calls from me saying, this is unacceptable. They came back, they had to redo the floors. Um, Yes, they polished the hallways and the hallways looked great because there was 50 coats of wax on a lot of the hallways. So yes, you can make that look really good by adding product to the top of that wax and burnishing that wax. The buildings look nicer. Um, That's important. But, correct. So so they they have made the appearance much better for the district, for our students and staff. Do I think the buildings are any cleaner? Not at all. Um, Because I know the staff that's in there cleaning, and and I can can walk into most spaces and they're still not clean, clean. Um, You know, I would say appearance, they're an A, B. Cleanliness, they're probably a C, you know, kind of thing. So... Um, well, I mean, and can, I guess, I you guess, can, you know, you can make it look really nice by shining things up, you know. And but you understand still, too that once bit, twice shy. I mean, we're coming off a bad relationship for three years, and so it's, you know, you, you touch the wound, it's sore already. We and still have. Normally, guys, oh, that's, that's a guys, guys, it's going to touch con- them in the arm. It's, it's going to continue. It's sore already. You know? I'm very confident yeah. in this, okay. and, and I, I don't mind sharing that with you. It's going to continually get better. What this is is it's really about going out and finding the right people. And, and, and it takes time to do that. You know, you're not going to just find these, you know, the people. And then the landscapers will tell you the same thing, that their biggest challenge is recruiting. And that's what we came in and said, we're strong with that. we got enough people in the area. We have enough support. Uh, and, and it was very fortunate that we had to draw on some of that support to be able to get some of these things. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll interject on, on your behalf, I think one thing that we're missing here, right, is that when you came aboard, right, you knew there was going to be X number of employees that you needed to go through, see who was good enough to stay, and then you can go out and hire. We're still well, you, going you, you weren't that. going to go out and hire a whole crew to come in when you already had a crew here, but you got to go through it, right? Yeah, but we're still so going I'm, through I know that. I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm putting you in a better light here, right? And, I mean, and, yeah, yeah, and, so. and, and it is. And some of the people, you know, if, if you get in and you write accountability schedules and you do the things you need to do, which we are, we're, we're really looking at people and going, who's measuring up and who's not? Some of the people are some of our hires that, that may not be, and some of the people were existing people that were already here that they were getting lost in the weeds and they've been doing that for a long time. That's all changing now. These guys are, these guys are on their game and they're going through it. I'll, I'll apologize for not getting out of the box and hitting a home run that, that first month or so. But we've rebounded pretty quickly. We, we met some of the deadlines that we needed to meet that, that kind of, you know, came up on us very quickly, you know, with, with some of the teachers coming back. I think, it, you know, Springport is an example. They just came back today. Correct. You know, 
we had to be prepared well in advance. Now we lost, we lost a month. That'll never happen again. We're here, and what we're going to do, I'll make that commitment to you the same as I will. But we're here now, and we're trying to sort through that. So it's it's when you go out and you hire, maybe eighty percent will be good, and the other twenty percent will just start to turn over. And we're going to go through a little bit of that. We're, we'll be past this. Well, I just I, I hope you guys understand that you know this is an issue for us. But we're not going to let it go. If I if I bid out a contract, which I do in my other job, and a paving contractor showed up to pave my road and didn't bring his mill machine, mm -hmm. he's not a very good paving contractor. I, I think so. That, I, I mean, think you can't. You can't. Time, you're going to say, you know what? We chose the right group. I hope so. You know, even but you also have to understand we're not we're not we going to just some of those type of things. That's we're fine, but you also it. have to understand we're not just going to sit back and say, oh, well, he says he's going to do it. We're going to feel good about this. I want you to understand. We're really watching. We're really paying attention, and we, this is somewhat. You should. Right. When you, you should. And and in, in full transparency, we're we're doing the same thing. We're looking at things and we're evaluating you know different things that, that we're coming into. And going, all right, maybe we didn't understand this completely, but we're adapting to it and we're making those type of changes. Because a lot of the stuff that we were getting is feedback from some of the existing employees that were there. Okay. This needs to be changed, and this needs to. We really do have a good plan for this, and, and, and I'm sorry that you know it might have left a little bit of a bad taste initially. It's not going to move it forward. It's okay. going to continue to get better and better. Well, and I, I, time good. I appreciate that. Who? Group. I mean, our patience is going to run out. <coughs> we're definitely, we're definitely not the last group. I, I know, I know the group well, and we're, we, we, we're, we dig in, and that's who we are. And here, the other question I have, when you, when you came in and you were doing your proposal, was we asked to evaluate, based on your criteria, of look at cleanliness of the building for mm -hmm. and, and you, and I, I don't want to mischaracterize it, but you know, it's, it was probably like C level. Yeah. What do you think the buildings are from a cleanliness standpoint, based on your own criteria of measurement? Uh, different aspects are, are, are better. I mean, you guys can speak to it. I know it's, it's better than certainly C, but it's not where we want it to be. It, it, it's definitely not where we want it to be. And as far as the staffing goes, <coughs> let, let's see at the next meeting. I'm going to give you an example. Let's see at the next meeting. Let's go, take, let's go check the high school at the next meeting. Because, when, again, my stuff. I'm, I'm a lot to blame for the staffing. I run Springport School District also, and I'm incorporating. I'm actually bringing part of this list you know, are two trained supervisors from Springforth, which assembled a group. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to get, and, and they live up in the Reading area too. Right. So I'm going to bring groups in. Right. If I bring, and this is what happened over the summer, like Bob said, we're hiring people here and there, and you're trying to figure them out. When you bring one or two people in, and you have five or six people that have been here, it kind of contaminates your percentage of, of who's going to be successful. Right. Well, this way, I can bring an entire group in, load up the high school. Let's get the high school. But we're, we're moving. You have to. Let me. I got it. I got it. Building by building. I got to kind of cut it short, but you have to understand. I'm never probably going to do a walkthrough with you, because you know I'm coming. But you have to understand, I'm a coach. I'm in the schools. These guys are parents. We're in the schools. You know, we see it. So, right. just for point of reference, I got to end it. And I appreciate, thank you for, for your and, words. And I appreciate yep. you, you hearing what we had to say yep. on this because we're, we're there. We're committed to the community. We who, really are. Who's coming to the meeting next month? Just like who? So it'll be your. I'll be here. Okay, so you'll be our point of contact. Okay. I'll be and here. maybe we'll next meeting. By mid September. It goes well. We'll be a full staff by mid September, is what you're saying. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, Holter can tell you if we, if we see a field that doesn't look good, you know, I see Nate anywhere I'm going to say hey Nate the field looks like crap what are you right. doing and not that I've had to say that but he'll tell you we're around even when you don't think we're around and I'm not I don't mean to sing okay. you out because your field don't look like crap but but he can, as a vendor he can really vouch close. we just yeah. show up and we're there well I will right. I will and speak for Halter you know Halter also has an agreement with the school district and they said they would do a certain quality of work and they have gone above and beyond mm -hmm. from day one right. and they have followed through with right. what they what they've 
our promise. Okay. So the weights he looked up. September, yeah, you say you're going to be full staff to see what happens, you know? In the sense that, you know, we, we yeah, had uh, back some back. staffing concerns. Here, but we've really honed in on it, and okay. uh, I think you're going to be pretty happy with some of the selections that we've made and some of the changes that we've made. Because sometimes it's a heck of a lot easier if they you know, for, for the area? Yes. See, I'm selfish. I'm saying take them off the string course, make them school tomorrow, and let them worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> thank, thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. And we'll see you guys next meeting. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Halter, for coming. That concludes our meeting, 728.